hello students today we will take the unit 1 that is diversity in the living world which includes four chapters the first chapter is the living world and the second chapter is biological classification and the third chapter is plant kingdom and the fourth chapter is animal kingdom today's class we will take the chapter number 1 that is the living world in that the first topic the very first topic is what is living living means it is a unique complex organization of various bio molecules which are expressing themselves in form of various chemical reactions that results in growth development responsiveness of an organism adaptation and reproduction so this is the definition of living basically what i wanted to tell you is let us take one organism and every one of us know all of the organisms are made up of the basic unit that is called as a cell we are all made up of cells now let us take one cell out now you try to analyze the chemical composition of that particular cell then you can clearly see that cell is made up of various bio molecules such as carbohydrates the next one is proteins and the next one is fats and the next one is nucleic acids such as dna and rna so all these bio molecules they are joining together to make a cell and all these cells they are joining to make this complex body so that only i wanted to tell you living means that means a life means it's a unique complex organization of various bio molecules that means many bio molecules as i mentioned carbohydrates proteins fats and nucleic acids such as dna and rna they are joined so complex organization of these bio molecules okay hope you understand till now now thoda aage jayega which are expressing themselves as various chemical reactions that means these all biochemicals that are present in the cell they are not quite they are expressing in form of various chemical reactions and these chemical reactions lead to growth and development and responsiveness and adaptations and reproduction so this makes the standard definition of life now life means it is a state of being alive or experiencing the life how by representing the capacity of an organism to utilize the materials from external environment for energy production growth and reproduction and also to regulate the metabolic processes that means please try to understand when organism is represented as an organism how because these organisms has capacity to utilize the substances from outside for example i'll tell you very very easy way please try to listen it carefully now every one of uh, one of us we took birth as a very small babies of 2.5 maximum 3 kg of small baby now you have grown to maybe 5 feet or maybe 6 feet also some students they are even taller than me also i am sorry i am so happy for them so what i want to tell is every one of us we took as small babies but now we started eating now that means we are eating matlab we started using the resources which are present outside and then when we eat this particular food they undergoes digestion and by the digestion the complex food material it break down to simple soluble molecules and they enters into the blood for example i'll tell you very clearly now you had food when you are having food it consisting of some roti and some chawal and some sabji now let us take roti in roti it consisting of carbohydrates and also some proteins now you roti you usually roast it by adding uh, one or 
two tablespoons of some ghee or sometimes oil now in that you are adding fat that means uh, uh, this ghee and also oil they are consisting of fat now you are having this roti but when it enters into our body this roti which is having carbohydrates proteins and this fats they cannot be able to utilized by the cell as such then what to do this large complex molecules that means carbohydrates proteins and fats they are broken down to small small molecules so simple soluble molecules such as carbohydrates they break down to form simple soluble molecules such as glucose now proteins they break down to form simple soluble molecules called as amino acids whereas fats also they break down to form glycerol and fatty acids now is such a easy a uh, soluble particles they become after digestion and they gets absorbed by the blood and blood it supply all these digested food material to every cell of the body so cell can be able to utilize that particular substance for the energy production and also for growth and reproduction and also to maintain the regular metabolic process of the body so this is called as ability of an organism to utilize the substances from external environment hope you understand it students so uh, whenever you get doubt i will be always available to you so you can simply whatsapp me i will answer we have a separate group for uh, uh, this uh, 11th class so that you can whatsapp me in that particular group group and then i'll answer all your questions anything what you understand you can just whatsapp me and whenever i see immediately i will give proper response to you okay whereas these organisms may be unicellular or uh, multicellular now let us take what are the properties exhibited by various organisms now characteristics of living beings before we go to the characteristics first of all what is the meaning of living being living organism means what living organisms matlab they are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive system capable of responding towards external stimulus let us take what is the meaning of this particular definition now let us go word after word so that you can understand very easily living organisms are self replicating that means this organism should have the capability to produce the young ones of their own kind for example uh, one lion is there this lion can be able to uh, produce uh, its baby it's called as cub now let us take uh, one dog now the dog has ability to produce its own offspring that is called as puppy like that human beings are there and and human beings are also having the capacity to produce the young ones of their own kind and we will call it as a baby uh, like a male baby or female baby so organism should have the capacity of what replicating so they can be able to maintain their species constant hope you understand the meaning of the first word self replicating whereas if you take unicellular organisms also let us take easily i'll tell because if i tell examples you will understand more uh, than just reading it so let us take amoeba amoeba it undergoes a type of reproduction called as of course it is asexual reproduction and that is called as binary fission that means only one parent individual it gets divided into two offsprings so it is divided into two offsprings so by binary fission so organism is divided into by so binary fission fission means what getting separated or divided whereas how many how many parts it is getting divided two parts that's why binary fission hope you understand so organisms must be self replicating so this is the meaning of this first word now let us take the second word of the definition evolving that means organism should be able to change uh, its body according to the external environment that is called as evolving hope you know evolution the gradual 
change that takes place in the body of an organism it is called as evol evolution so for example let us take it's a belief that we are the human beings we actually evolved from a group of apes that means this apes slowly slowly they started uh, a walking and then they started the uh, characters of the developing the characters of a human being now we became this human body that is called as homo sapiens homo homo sapiens erectus that means we uh, eventually started developing the human characters and then we became the human being so uh, we started our origin with apes but we now became human beings that means gradually we converted into human beings from ape this only it is called as evolving so evolution means the gradual change that takes place in the body of an organism that is called as evolution whereas here in uh, uh, we are using the sentence that's why i i wrote evolving and self regulating we should be able to regulate our body for example when you are feeling hungry someone should not remind you that you are feeling hungry you are able to recognize whether you are hungry or not for example if you wanted to go to school so you should be able to see the time uh, as it is 9 o'clock now we supposed to go to the school for example if you wanted to go for a walk you should be able to recognize now i feel like walking so in our body we have a self regulatory system like this how let us take we are taking breathing so just we are taking breathing but once we take uh, this this breathing this oxygen it is entering into your lungs and from lungs to the blood and blood to various cells so how it is regulating now you are taking food now when you are taking food you are taking complex chemical complex uh, biomolecules whereas when it is entering into the body this a complex molecules they are breaking down to simple soluble molecules as i already mentioned in the above slide like glucose amino acids and also fatty acids so your body just you are eating food uh, just you are taking breathing but your body only it is looking after what we have to do further so that ability of an organism to maintain itself by various metabolic activities that is called as self regulating interactive system hope you understand so three words i mentioned in the definition the first one is self replicating the second word is evolving and the third word is self regulating interactive system so these three uh, words make the proper definition for living organisms so again i'll read it so that you can understand little more better living organisms are self replicating evolving and self regulating interactive system capable of responding towards external stimulus see here i am i am taking one more word responding towards external stimulus for example it is hot then what you do immediately you will on the fan no it is cold then what you do immediately you will on the ac i am really sorry if if it is cold immediately you started wearing you start wearing any sweater or sweatshirt something like that so somehow you will make your comfort so that means you are responding towards the external stimulus hope you understand the definition of living organism whereas here one important point is there where you have to understand so clearly that living and non living objects actually they are composed of same type of elements that means carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen it is these are all atoms these are all atoms which are present in living and also non living matters then then what makes the difference between uh, uh, living organisms and non living objects and even they are subjected to the same physical laws like gravitation and also uh, magnetism so everything is same uh, between living and non living but still what makes the difference between living and non living that is very very important point what you need to understand let us see how we are different from non living objects let us see we that means we means here i i mean living organisms they exhibit certain characteristics so with the help of that characteristics we are distinguishing ourselves from the non living objects what are they see i have given a list here you can read it the first the first one is the first characteristic is 
growth and the second characteristic is reproduction and the third characteristic is metabolism and the fourth one is response towards external stimulus and the fourth one is homeostasis and these are the uh, uh, characteristics exhibited by the organism let us see uh, one after one and uh, here uh, I made a very small mistake and the mistake what I did is here in the homeostasis I I have to introduce the uh, cellular organization I'm really sorry for that here you please write cellular organization instead of homeostasis students I'm really sorry for this in the place of homeostasis you add cellular organization and here just just go side of this particular characteristics first two characteristics uh, characteristics that is growth and reproduction they are the non defining properties and metabolism and response towards stimulus and cellular organization that the defining properties what does it mean uh, it mean growth and reproduction they are not the defining characters that means all the organisms do not show the growth and reproduction are all the organisms need not to show the growth and uh, reproduction for example one unicellular organism is there it never grow why our pura body me unicellular uni means one cellular means having cell so pura organism me ek hi cell hai so unicellular organism isme kya growth hai ek hi cell hai pura body me ek hi cell hai so then how it will grow so but still it is a living organism hope you understand and reproduction uh, organism for example some uh, some of the pe people some of the persons they never marry and they never give birth to the babies then uh, they are not living organisms so these two are not compulsory an organism should grow an organism should not uh, should uh, reproduce so they are not like compulsory characters if they don't grow they have to die if they don't reproduce they have to die so yes sir bilkul nahi hote hai hope you understand so that's why they are not defining properties of the organism but very important point i'm telling you every organism has to show the metabolism every organism should have the ability to respond towards the stimulus and every organism should have cellular organization that means for example if one organism it is not showing metabolism obviously it will die one organism is not responding towards the stimulus obviously it will die so these three characters will define they are must and should characters that has to be performed by the organisms that's why they are called as defining properties of the organism whereas growth and reproduction they may not organism may be or may not be able to exhibit this type of properties if they show this characters very good if they don't show this characters also very good so that's why these two are non defining properties of the living organism let us take one after one but student is a small correction what is that actually we have to start from growth reproduction but for your easy understanding because it is it is like a, a basic classes that's why immediately if i start with the non defining properties i feel that you don't understand that's why we slowly slowly we are starting you are still just uh, uh, small kids that's why you need little better understanding that's why i am reversing the sequence so i am starting the defining properties first and then i'll start the non defining properties just i am making this change only for your understanding let us take the characters one after one now the first defining character is nothing but metabolism what is metabolism the sum total of all the chemical reactions that takes place in the body to maintain the life that is called as metabolism for example just example ke liye me i am telling one person is there let us name that person his his person uh, that person name is uh, some uh, 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 ram so this ram body me some thousand chemical reactions are taking place students i am telling you i am telling this only for your understanding sake to be frank so many hundreds of chemical reactions that takes place in our body just i want you to make you to understand that's why i am telling like this now let us take 100 chemical reactions are taking place in that body of ram so all the sum total of this 100 chemical reactions to uh, 
uh, it, that takes place in the body to maintain the life that sum total of the chemical reactions that is called as metabolism so hope you understood sum total of all the chemical reactions that takes place in the body of an organism to maintain the life that is called as metabolism such chemical reactions are of two types that means metabolism it is of two types what are they first one is anabolism and the second one is catabolism let us take the first one the first one is anabolism anabolism means these are the chemical reactions in which small molecules they join to form a big molecule then that is called as anabolism for example i have taken photosynthesis as an example so that you can understand so easily so uh, till now in your lower classes you must have read the photosynthesis that's why i have taken such an easy example in photosynthesis what happens see here you can see six molecules of carbon dioxide and 12 molecules of the water so what i told anabolism small molecules they join to form big molecule am i correct hope you remember this so here these are small molecules what are they carbon dioxide and water but these carbon dioxide and water molecules which are small they are reacting with each other in the presence of sunlight and then producing a big molecule what is a big molecule c6 h12 and o6 that means this is a glucose molecule so to form one big molecule two three small small molecules if they join then that is called as anabolism but you have to understand so clearly anabolism mein kya chal rahe, kya ho rahe? two or three molecules are joining to form a big molecule so can i call it as constructive process yes 100% I can call anabolism is a constructive process because here joining of small small molecules are taking place to form a big molecule. Let us take a common example. If you wanted to build a uh, 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 like a wall then what you do you will join so many small small bricks and then you can make a big wall. Hope you understand that's why anabolism is also known as constructive process now let us take the second type hope you remember metabolism it is of two types the first one is anabolism and the next one is catabolism so i am taking the second one catabolism now catabolism exactly opposite to anabolism so what i told in anabolism two or more molecules they join to form big molecule hai na? right exactly opposite one big molecule it is a, a dividing into this uh, it is it break down into small small molecules then that is called as a, a, a catabolism here the glucose here uh, a c6h12o6 that means this is a glucose molecule now this glucose molecule it is break down to form what 6 co2 plus 12 h2o to form some energy that means a big molecule it is breaking to form some small small molecules then that is called as catabolism hope you understand so now anabolism it is called as constructive process so can i call catabolism as a destructive process yes why because one big molecule it is breaking to form sm some small small molecules then this is called as catabolism hope you understand now the next one consciousness consciousness means response of an organism towards external stimulus uh, that only i i entitled it as consciousness consciousness basically means ability of an organism to sense the physical or chemical or biological stimulus for example i'll tell you very very easy way of course we are responding with the help of some sense organs what are they some examples if i tell you will definitely understand now when you touch a hot object immediately you will withdraw your hands how because our skin is a type of sense organ so with the help of skin immediately you are responding as yes, this is a very hot object it is harming my skin so immediately within no second you withdraw your hand that means you have ability to respond towards external stimulus am i correct or not now let us take uh, one snake it is moving uh, it is it is going uh, 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 on your side then what 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 you do on seeing it only immediately will jump to the safer side am i correct or not that means you have seen that means eyes are also what a kind of sense organ so that you can be able to detect that snake it may harm me 
so i need to go to the safe place so you are responding that response that ability of response of an organism towards this particular external stimulus like uh, physical chemical and biological stimulus that only of course with the help of sense organs that only it is called as consciousness and i brought uh, uh, two three examples also uh, for you uh, let us take plants plants can be able to respond towards the external factors such as the light see uh, uh, you keep you take one plant and you keep it under shade then what happens you can see clearly it bend towards the light so plants are responding and if, for example if you don't put water for uh, uh, for two three days the plant it starts wilting so it becomes weak and that means it is showing this uh, response towards the water like that it show response towards temperature and it show response towards other organisms pollutants and even the plants are flowering seasonally so for example mango plant is there mango plant throughout the year why it is not producing the mangoes you only think just think then you will get the answer that means they are responding towards a particular season that that means plants they are having the consciousness because they are responding towards the external stimulus like that if you take human beings also human beings are having little more higher levels of consciousness why you know the reason see i clearly mentioned here because they have well developed nervous system but plants actually do not have nervous system have you ever read uh, neurons are present in plants huh? anyone said like that never because plants don't have any nervous system but we have a proper well developed nervous system and we have a good levels of communication system and that is called as skill of communication and that is called as self consciousness for example if you are feeling hungry immediately you will go to mother mommy please feed me you give me something to eat i am feeling hungry so you have good communication you can for example if you wanted to buy something or if you got to, if you wanted to do some shopping you will go to your father papa mujhe 100 rupees de do of course some students they do the dadagiri also nikal 100 rupees pakka nikal aisa bhi kar sakte but some some uh, self conscious to hai aapko so that only that, but when you compare this Uh, with plants uh, our self conscious abilities are very high when you compare with the plants here i need to tell you one important thing what is that you know even brain dead patient also that means coma patients you will call uh, you will call coma patient na? so in the coma patients also you can be able to see the consciousness but they have they don't have this particular self consciousness hope you understand because uh, they are also feeling hungry but they can't be able to express it so because they are brain dead but remaining physiological activities they are going on so that you need to clearly understand so again i'm telling you just for your understanding brain dead patients like me uh, that means coma patients they are having conscious but they are they can't be able to respond properly hope you understand now adaptation and homeostasis of course these are also very important characteristics of living organisms and dheere dheere slowly slowly when we are entering into other other chapters and these two topics you have to read many times but this is a first chapter and this is a kind of i am introducing the concepts that's why for now i am explaining only definitions so what is adaptation the ability of an organism to change the body according to the external environment that is called as adaptation for example very very easy example a polar bear you know every one of us know polar bear polar bear what it will do because it is living in polar regions very very cold temperature so what it is doing it is developing blubber thick layer of fat so it is changed because of the development of thick layer of fat in the body so how how cold it is outside but still it is not feeling it it's a common experience some of our students they are little healthy they are little fat then even in the winter also they want to see why because beneath under their skin a thick fat layer will be there fat layer will be deposited that's why they can't be able to respond towards the external stimulus 
external cold hope you understand how so already they are present in the polar region that means cold region that's why they're developing this blubber blubber means thick layer of the fat so it is a kind of adaptation it is changing the body right am i correct or not it is changing the body according to the climate where it is staying so that ability of an organism is called as adaptation hope you understand whereas this evolution ek din mein nahi to ek hafta mein bilkul nahi hota hai it is a long evolutionary process it needs generations i am telling you just to, to develop one single character it need two three generations understanding it it need a long evolutionary process and then it becomes genetically fixed hope you know what is genetically fixed ability of an organism to transfer that character from one generation to another generation that is called genetically fixed but to get this a uh, character to get genetically fixed it need to go through a long evolutionary process whereas here i brought one small word that is called acclimatization acclimatization means the ability of an organism to gradually adjust towards the changing environmental condition that means slowly slowly how an organism is adjusting towards the changes that are taking place in the external atmosphere that is called as acclimatization now let us take homeostasis very very important point and many times age various chapters we will read na and in and in that chapters many times you will read this particular word that is called as homeostasis homeostasis basically means maintaining the internal environment constant from ever changing external environment that is called as homeostasis hope you did not understand don't worry don't worry at all i will explain with an example now let us take our human temperature human body temperature as a small example our human body temperature is 37 degree centigrade of course when we measure it in fahrenheit our temperature it comes to 98.4 fahrenheit hai na now what i said our body temperature is 36 or sometimes 37 degree centigrade it fluctuates usually 36 sometimes 37 aisa fluctuate hota hai so let us come to the point now it is summer now outside the temperature it will be uh, some sometimes it will be even 40 41 also but still you take a thermometer and what you do you put the thermometer in your mouth and then after 2 3 minutes you take out still our temperature will be 37 how it is possible just think how it is possible it is possible because our body has the capacity of homeostasis immediately it activates the sweat gland so in our skin there are some special glands that are called as sweat glands they started producing the sweat so with the help of this sweat it 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 cool downs the body whereas let us take it is winter season just imagine of course it is not winter season but still we think for a while it is a winter season immediately outside temperature it will be 22 21 20 degree centigrade but what i said hope you remember our body temperature must be 36 to 37 degree centigrade then how how to maintain yes we have ability to homeostasis so we can be able to maintain how you know our muscles they started shivering you do na what what is it aisa karte hai na what is that that means you are shivering when you are shivering muscles in our body our muscles they are present in form of bundles and when this muscle bundles are shivering some friction is that means some heat it will be generated so that that heat it maintains the body temperature to 36 or 37 degrees centigrade so hope you understand now if i read definitely will understand the ability of an organism to maintain the internal environment constant so we are maintaining our internal environment constant that is 36 to 37 degrees centigrade from ever changing external environment so external uh, environment is always changing summer may 40 to 43 degree centigrade winter may 20 21 22 degree centigrade so external environment it is changing but our body internal environment it is not changing and that ability to maintain the unchanged environmental internal environmental condition that is called as homeostasis you understood now let us take the next 
uh, a characteristic of living organism that is called as a cellular organization hope you remember i made a small mistake what is that instead of the third uh, uh, character i i wrote homeostasis and i corrected it also now uh, we uh, in that place you write a cellular organization cellular organization basically means every organism you take any organism in this world whole world every organism is basically made up of cell that's why cell is a basic unit fundamental unit of any living organism of course some living organism restrict themselves with only one cell then they are called as unicellular whereas in some organisms these cells they will join to form tissues and again tissues to form organs and then body and they are called as multicellular organisms see i clearly mentioned small small atoms like a carbon hydrogen and uh, nitrogen and all phosphorus and all they are uh, atoms and the small small atoms they join to form molecules like carbohydrates proteins fats nucleic acids such as dna and rna see atoms they converted themselves in form of molecules now these molecules they join to form cells and again cells they join to form tissues that's why group of cells called as tissue and this tissues they join to form organs and organs they join to form organ systems various organ systems are there in the body like a digestive system and a respiratory system and excretory system like that so many systems are there in the body and this many systems they are joining to form uh, an organism and this sequence the sequential arrangement of the atoms molecules and cells that only you are calling it as cellular organization students hope you understand today's class and in the next video classes i will explain about non defining characters of the organism okay thank you so much students i am telling you any doubt feel free to ask me okay thank you so much